Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you for another opportunity to be able to share with your children. I pray, Lord, that as I share your word, as I share this word, Lord, I pray, Lord, that they'll be able to receive all the nutrients, the spiritual nutrients, Lord, and let me chuck out anything that isn't yours, Lord. I pray, Heavenly Father God, our hearts will be open and receptive. I pray, Heavenly Father God, I communicate in a manner in which be easier for everyone to receive. In Jesus' name, I pray. All right, I'm going to read Romans 8. I'm going to read 1. 1 to 11. I read, I'm reading the Holman's Christian's Bible, yeah? So it may sound different from yours if you're reading another translation. And scripture says, Therefore, no condemnation now exists for those in Christ Jesus, because the Spirit's law of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. What the law could not do since it was limited by the flesh, God did. He condemned sin in the flesh by sending his, one, his own son in flesh like, our, like ours under sin's domain. And as a sin offering, as, uh, and as a sin offering, in order that the law's requirements would be accomplished in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh think about the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit about the things of the spirit. For the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the spirit is life and peace. For the mindset of the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit itself to God's law, for, it's under, for it is unable to do so. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, not, are not in, flesh, not in the flesh, but in the spirit, since the spirit of God lives in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Now, if Christ is in your, if Christ, if, if, if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of the because of righteousness. And if the spirit of whom, so if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring your your mortal bodies to life through his spirit who lives in you. Amen. All right. Let's get it cracking. Um, have you guys ever heard the story about the, the frog and the scorpion? So I'll share it with you guys. So I think it's like a proverb or something. I heard it ages ago. Um, not biblical proverbs. <laughs> make that clear. So the story of the scorpion and the frog, basically um, the frog is raining, right? And there's a flood. And the frog wants to get across to the other side, to a drier place, basically. And he's engaged in conversation by a scorpion. And the scorpion says, can I get on your back so we can swim across and we can both be safe? And the frog says, no, 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 no. I'm not going to allow you to get on my back because you're known to sting people. But the scorpion says, come on, that's foolish. Why would I do that? If I sting you, we both drown. So of course I'm not going to sting you. He, he manages to convince, the, um, to convince the frog. So the frog says, no problem. Get on my back and let's keep it going. So he gets on the frog's back and they begin to make way. Halfway down the stream and a scorpion stings the frog. And as the frog's drowning, the frog's thinking, why would you do that? We're now both going to die. And the scorpion turns around and says, that's what I do. It's in my nature. I'm a scorpion. I sting. I thank God that we are no longer stuck in the worldly nature. I thank God that we are new creations, right? Uh, it's going to be a bit... I'll have to maneuver through the phone. I have my, my laptop, but it died. So just be patient with me. So scripture tells us that we're a new creation, right? So brand new. So we have the same spirit that, that raised Christ from the dead dwelling within us. But when I first became a born again believer, my spirit became new, but I didn't feel 
there wasn't any different feeling in me. I didn't feel any different. I mean, I still, my mind was kind of still battling the same type of things, right? When I looked in the mirror, I still kind of saw the same face. There wasn't any change. I still weighed the same. I was still not able to walk on water. So I, I had to come to an understanding that although my spirit was now brand new, my flesh had to basically catch up. Anyways, before I continue, so let me, today I'm going to be talking to you guys about identity. My apologies, I should have mentioned that before. I'm going to be talking to you guys about identity. And what is, what my thing is, is basically I'm talking to you guys, what, it, there's a question, um, which is, do you resemble the image of the spirit, right? So when I became a born again believer, like I said, I didn't, I didn't really see any difference. But, like I, so I looked the same, everything was the same, but the scriptures was telling me basically I was a new creation. I was a new creation and I believed it because I had confessed with my mouth that Jesus Christ was my Lord. I believed in my heart that God had raised him from the dead. So I knew I was a new creature, but there was this battle because I was new, but I didn't really feel new. I was still kind of battling the, uh, the same thing, the same things that I was battling like an hour before, a day before, or a little while before. So recently, I was uh, reading a book, and this book was basically uh, just talking about identity. And as it began to speak about identity and, and how identity was formed, it started to kind of to, to get me thinking, right? Why, do, why, do, why is it as a believer, I am new, but yet I don't really function as though I'm new? Why do I struggle to do those things that God has asked me to do, that I know is within me because my spirit is perfect, but yet me, myself, I struggle to, to bring it to pass? Why is this? So as I, as I began to question, and as I, be, I guess I uh, engaged God in conversation as to why that was, I guess God began to show me why that was, right? Basically, I ended up learning. So I ended up learning that, um, so whenever it comes to change, there's, there's three parts, according to this book anyway, there's probably more. There's three parts that this book mentioned, and it made sense. This book mentioned the outcome, it mentioned the process, and it mentioned the identity. So the outcome is basically our goals, what we desire to obtain. So the outcome, the outcome might be a certain weight. The majority of us here, you know, like we have a, a health group where we talk about how we're working at, right? So my, uh, my outcome might be what I want to obtain. It might be my weight, it might be I want to buy a new car, it might be I want to become financially independent. That's my outcome. The process would be the system, the system in which I use to get to that outcome, right? So if I, wanna, if I wanted to, to become a certain uh, weight, I might implement a new gym plan. If I wanted to become financially free, I might start learning about how money works. If um, I wanted to become a footballer, I'd probably train, right? So that's the, that's the system that, was, that, that would get me to the outcome. Identity, so there's three parts. There's outcome, process, and identity. Identity is the belief that the one obviously one holds. I'll give you guys a definition. Um, I read the definition. It's dead, unfortunately, but it's fine. We'll get through this. So there was two definitions. The first def definition said, the distinguishing character or personality of an individual. The second definition said, the relation established by psychological identification. The second one stood out to me because it was mentioned in your psychological, that psychological identification. So these two definitions, so why basically, so where there's three parts to change, identity plays the most, the most important part for the reason being, I'll give an example. If you had two people who both smoked, right, and they were offered a cigarette, the first one who was offered a cigarette said, no, I'm trying to quit. The second person says, no, I don't smoke. The first person still identified themselves as a smoker. Whereas the second person does not identify themselves as a helper. And identity is so important because even when you're implementing, for example, like a workout plan, and the majority of us are guilty of this, yeah? Me, myself. Where you're motivated. A little while ago, Pastor Ezekiel uh, spoke on faith. And he was showing us how every single day you need faith for that particular day. You can't live on yesterday's faith. So imagine now you're implementing a new workout, right? And in the morning, so your, your height, let's, take, let's say is January. So you're amped and you're like, I'm going to do this. 
I'm no longer going to be 13 stones. I'm going to go down to 11. And you write, that's, that's the outcome, right? And you write out your system on how you're going to get there. The process of it. So you write it out and you're like, every single day I'm going to go gym. I'm going to work out for an hour. I'm going to do squats. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You've done all of that. Then you wake up in the morning and you're still motivated. The first week, you're amped. So you go out there and you do the workout and you're like, yes, I've done the first week. The second week, you're not as amped as the first week, but you're still kind of amped. So you keep going, right? You, still keep, you still, keep, uh, still keep working out, still keep working out. The third week is a bit of a drag now. Do you know what I mean? It's a bit of a drag because... You know, you're st before you even leave your house, you're thinking about the weights you've got to lift. You're thinking about the 10 minutes you've got to run. You're thinking about this and you're thinking about that. You're just like, oh, you know what? Why can't this come any easier, right? The fourth week, it's a long thing, right? It's just, you don't want to do this no more. You don't want to go there, but you're like, you know what? I've got to stick to my plan. You try to go out there. You, you know, you, you may, maybe you still go, but you miss a couple of days. But you know why that's taking effect. What, you know why that's happening. Your self-image is now coming back into play. You don't have an image that drives that. Now, a person who works out regularly, whether it's snowing, whether it's raining, they're going to wake up, put their gym shoes on, and they're going to be at the gym because they identify themselves as being fit, whereas someone else is trying to become fit. And as I was thinking about it, I was like, you know what? But how does this work in terms of our relationship with God, though? Because, and then I started to relate the two. Yeah, Lord, because when I became a born-again believer... I didn't straight away feel like I was who you called me that I was. Like, why was that? Because my flesh was playing catch-up with my spirit. My spirit was perfect. My flesh wasn't there yet. But then, um, when we first become believers, we're advised, read your word because your word renews the mind. And as the mind is becoming renewed, so is the beliefs. You're now beginning to think how Christ thinks. You're now beginning to do what Christ would do. It's now becoming your nature right because the thing about identity when i when i was first reading a book i was thinking hold on a minute but isn't identity fixed isn't it fixed isn't a, a person just who they are right but as i started to learn started to learn about it, it was like well no because when you're born again the fact that i don't feel like i'm new shows me that i can be nude not only in my spiritual realm but i could also manifest man manifest what's inside out here Right? And this, I've, over, over time, your actions will prove that to you because once upon a time, some of us use profanity. But it got to a point where even now, like when you, it tastes disgusting in your mouth because you no longer do that. That's not you. Or if someone robs you the wrong way and you react to it and it's just like, you, you, it's happened to me at work where, you know, someone cuts you up in traffic and you're just like, what's wrong with this person? Like, are they mad? And then you drive off and you're like, sorry, Lord. Whereas before I continued driving, it's like, yeah, man, that guy, so and so and so and so. And I began to realize that the more I'm reading my scripture, the more I'm bringing what God has created in me outwardly. The more I'm beginning to behave how God behaves. The more I'm beginning to respond how God would respond. The more I begin to live my life how God, uh, how, how God wants me to live my life. And also, as I started to think about this, I was like, wow, like, one of the reasons why this... The book's quite big. But the reason why identity stood out to me, I'm a fan of anything that can help me change it for the better. One of the reasons why that stood out to me was like, I believe um, if you was in a uh, conference that we had earlier, a little, couple of weeks ago, um, I spoke on responsibility. So I, even areas in which I'm struggling in, I know that there's something I can do about it. So when I'm reading this and they're telling me that um, you could change your identity by doing so on and so on and so on. I was like, okay, cool. Um, how? And when he started to explain it, it's like, it just it opened my eyes, even in terms of how I can change to walk my faith in a much more better manner. And when he started uh, kind of like breaking it down, I started to think, okay, cool. So how do I even go about changing my identity? How do I even go about living the way that I want to live without having to force myself to do it? For, for that particular identity to just become the norm for me, right? And as I started to think about it, the guy said something, he's got a thing called, he calls um, the feedback loop, where um, the more and more and more, okay, cool, let me put it this way. You believe who you are because you've got proof. Before you became a mother or a father, you couldn't identify yourself as a mother or a father. I'm pretty sure we can all relate. When 
you first had your child, right? When your child was first born. And I remember being at work, just wanted to finish work quickly, just to go home, to see this person who had just come into the world who belonged to me. And as time went, because I was still getting used to that I'm a dad thing. But as time went, it became a norm. It became a norm. I heard someone say not too long ago, when they drive home and they see their kid like, yeah, daddy's home, they turn around and drive off because their kid just wants to play. They've come too used to having their kids around. It's like you've got evidence for why you believe what you believe. So in order to believe something new, it first begins with discipline. It begins with an outcome. So you have an outcome that you desire to receive, to obtain. Then you have the actions. Then you have the belief that you can ob obtain that out uh, you can obtain that outcome. So then you begin to do the thing that which it is that you want to uh, that the system. You begin to implement the actions. The more and more and more you begin to implement those actions, over time, that new image overrides the old one. So now you become new, right? But it all has to begin with identity. Unless you unless you identify yourself with that person, the the new individual who you desire to become, it's going to be very hard for you to become that person. It's always, you're always motivated in the beginning. It's always the end. I was reading not too long ago that 82% um, of people that win the lottery, they end up worse than they were when, before they won the lottery. I remember uh, we used to listen to, I used to listen, I still do every now and then, but Jim Rohn, Jim Rohn always used to say, if you win the lottery, it's best you become a millionaire quickly. I used to think, what does he mean by that? Well, a person who wins the lottery is just an individual with a million pounds in his account. He himself is not a millionaire. If he lost that money today, he could not obtain it. He could not get it again. Whereas someone who's made that million, if they lose it, they can make it again. More than likely, even more than they made before. Because they're, they're, they're a millionaire within their mindset. That's who they identify themselves as. Whether as the person who wins the lottery, he still has a broke mentality. He still has a broke mindset. He, w he doesn't know how to manage that money. He doesn't know who to give that money to. Everyone else becomes his enemies. He doesn't know what to do with the money, so he actually becomes worse than he is. And we was having a conversation. We was having a conversation today um, about what money does. And I was like, money, all that money does is just identifies who you are on a bigger scale. And I also heard another, uh, somewhere else, where a person goes, if you was to take all the money in the world and split it up equally, to each and every individual in this world, over time, it will just end up back in the hands of the individuals who are the richest. So everything you have now, if you was to lose it, over time you get everything you have now. The only way you get more is to change your identity. And here's the other thing about identity. Um, so you guys won't get this wrong. You won't receive this wrong. Um, Rather than trying to please God, become a person that does what's required to please God, right? So here's what I mean by that. Trying to do good because you want God to look at you and clap your hands, it almost becomes like it's a burden, right? It's like, because I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do this and I can't do that. But when I begin to identify myself as... Let me be careful I say this. So you have Jesus, Right? who came before us, he's the perfect image that we should aspire to become. If I only just focused on becoming more like Christ, over time, there will be no need for me to think whether I'm pleasing God or not. Does that make sense? It will just become natural. It will become my lifestyle. It will become something that I just do. When someone does this, I'll respond how God responds. When someone does that, I'll respond how God responds. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm not focused on, oh Lord, I'm going to do this because I want to please you. No, I'm going to do this because this is just my lifestyle. This is how I live my life. This is who I am. This is what's in me. Do you understand? And the thing is, the, 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 the blessing in all of this, what I hope you guys take away from this is that you guys designed that. We designed that. It's not, God has already given it to us, but in order for it to manifest outside of us, we are the ones that are going ahead and saying, okay, cool, look, that's the outcome that I desire. I desire to be more like Christ. Here's how I'm going to do it. Every single day I'm going to do this. I'm going to read my scripture more. I'm going to change my beliefs more. I'm going to think more like Christ. Over time, don't worry about what anyone says. People always, people always judge you and say, you're there and you're not doing it right. Look, things take time. Over time, I guarantee you, you will walk and people question as to how you got there. 
It will take time, but people question as to, how to, as to how you got there. It will happen organically, as people say, right? It will happen organically. And over time, you'll just, you know what? It will be that time when you will know within yourself that God's pleased with me. Not because I was fighting and I was, you know, because look, what I find with myself as well, like, my walk got easier when I started to focus on becoming more like Jesus and um, walking my life as he did rather than, like, God, are you happy with me today? Are you happy with me today? What, what, I've just done this. Are you angry with me? I've just done that. You, do you know what I mean? It's that like over time when I was like, you know, what? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry myself with that. I'm not gonna. Cons- I know that, like, uh, um, I know that God loves me unconditionally. So here's what I'm gonna do. Every single time I get it wrong, I'm gonna repent and I'm gonna keep walking. Every single time I get that wrong, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna keep walking. Every s- and over time, just that weight just just got off me do you know what i mean it was it's much more easier for me to just walk my walk it's much more easier for me to respond the way that i'm supposed to respond rather than feeling like i have those chains on me do you know what i mean it's like remember because god could have done it in another way you could have become born again you could have become a born again believer and automatically changed and people would have seen you and they would have been like oh my days there's something about you jackie that's just do you know what i mean when i became a born again believer my friends looked at me and they, they saw exactly the same person sarah mentioned today her, some of her friends will call her for certain things and for certain things they will not call her sometimes my friends i see you know like you have this whatsapp thing and they're out and they're raving or whatever they never contacted me but before it was much easier for them to yeah we're, we're going this place like let's go it was much easier for them but over time they realize he's not the same benjamin we used to know he's different now do you know what i mean even if it's just by him saying they might not necessarily see the the outwardly spiritual side of it, maybe it's just, he don't go there no more. He doesn't curse anymore. He doesn't speak like that anymore. So whenever they're around, I have, we have certain friends, when they're talking, it will slip out of their mouth, just like this, uh, I don't mean to swear, but you know what, he was getting on my nerves. Do you know what I mean? It's like, automatically, that was, it's happened over time. I remember telling a friend of mine, oh, why'd you keep cursing? When I became a born again believer first, I would ask him, why'd you keep cursing? Why'd you keep cursing? The guy turned around and goes, mate, shut your mouth. Like, they told me to just, when we all know you, you believe in Jesus now, but just, just leave us out of it kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? But the same person now watches his mouth when he's talking around me. Do you, do you know what I mean? So over time it takes its place. But identity is so crucial for you becoming who you want to become. Have your goals. Write down your goals. Write down the processes. But remember, in order for you to reach your goals, you have to believe that you're a person that can reach those goals. In, we already know that in, within us we have the perfect spirit. What we've got to do, obviously, just read your scripture and apply those things. As, as, don't watch no one's face. Don't watch no one else. Just continue to apply those things that you see in scripture. As time goes, you'll start to, you'll start to realize that your spirit will begin, your flesh will begin to reflect what your spirit um, is made of. Amen? All right. Um, it's a quick one, quick, simple one. Next week, I'll, clo- I'll, I'll close in prayer. And yeah, we'll just keep it moving. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you. I praise your holy name, Lord. I praise you for you don't leave us alone, Lord. You don't leave us to, to figure it out on our own, Lord. You provide for us, Heavenly Father God, a way, Heavenly Father God. You provide for us um, systems on how we can grow to become the individuals who you have created for us to be, Heavenly Father. I pray, Lord, that we begin to see us ourselves as you have created for us to see us to see ourselves heavenly father god i pray heavenly father god our spirits will begin our flesh will begin to resemble our spirit heavenly father god that we may manifest heavenly father god that which you have put in us outside of our physical realm heavenly father god i pray lord that as the world looks at us heavenly father that they will see what you have put in us heavenly father god I pray, Heavenly Father God, that we acknowledge, Lord, that there is no condemnation, Heavenly Father God, in those who believe in you, Lord. And I pray as we accept that, Heavenly Father God, and that becomes a part of our walk, Heavenly Father God, we'll begin to, be, we'll begin to draw closer and closer and closer, not only to you, Heavenly Father God, but to that individual that you see, Heavenly Father God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen.